Let me get all the steps in. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Bruce Douglas. I'm with the Nevada State Library Archives and Public Re Records. It is great to see you. Uh, this session is being recorded, as I've said about four times now. Uh, you might want you you might want to uh, put your name, uh, library, and email in the chats for record keeping purposes as well. The reason we're recording this is we've had people who cannot attend whose libraries are closed right now on Mondays. Uh, whoever they are, good for them. <laughs> but uh, we will uh, record our, this session for them and we will post it to our YouTube channel, uh, the Nevada State Library uh, YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going I'm going to be uh, sharing my screen in a moment, and uh, we will get started. It is so lovely to see everybody here this morning. And hey, Jess. <laughs> okay. And I'm going. One moment. Okay, and it, to ask the universal question, is everybody seeing this? <laughs> I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to our very first uh, summer reading program and new services meeting for the upcoming summer reading, which is, as you know, Tales and Tales. And this is our agenda. I'll give you a quick second to look over it so we can get to the discussion part of it. Uh, we're gonna have an introduction, uh, some rules for the Zoom meeting, some announcements, uh, continuing education opportunities, uh, sharing time. And our question today will be how are your prepar preparation plans for summer reading program for families going? Future discussion ideas and that's pretty much it. Conclusion. Uh, hopefully we can get this all done in uh, about 45 to an, 45 minutes to the full hour. I know some of you probably have to get to a desk or something. So we'll be mindful of the time. Okay, and our introduction. Uh, today we're going to be uh, we're going to share ideas, share resources. This is our general idea of what we want to do in these meetings. Uh, strengthen the Nevada library community, which is everybody that who's attending, and all the libraries in Nevada, and share news and information that uh, relates to summer reading. Okay. Um, our meeting rules are going to be simple. Uh, be respectful of one another. Please don't multitask during this uh, time period. If you can, uh, keep your microphones uh, mute during the meeting so that we don't get the weird noises like you're probably hearing in my, from my mic already because my dogs are crazy. Uh, and if you, if you could, if possible, please place your phones on vibrate and please share any links in the chat that you may want to share with everybody uh, so that they can get a good copy of it. All right, and start off, we got some announcements for you. Uh, the, the summer reading program orders that, you know, for um, banners and bookmarks and stuff like that is, are being processed, uh, still being processed. The snowstorm that hit the country, uh, hit that area pretty bad and they're backed up. Uh, I've talked to the people there and um, 
the uh, they just said that they are working on it and maybe two weeks from now we sh should be getting that stuff in and uh, Betsy Johnson uh, the second thing I wanted to tell you guys about uh, Betsy Johnson uh, uh, wants you guys to know that the license plate fund for summer reading program uh, March 20th deadline is approaching. Uh, these are, you know, this uh, please contact her if you guys want to get some um, some more information about that, some funding and stuff like that. The license plate fund is money they collect from license plates that are directed for to the library. Uh, so it's a pretty good thing to talk about. Uh, and, 20, and the 2021 Rural Hunger Summit is coming. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And the Padlet is still growing and ongoing. And I'm hoping you guys will start uh, using it because it's a pretty freaking awesome thing. All right. So our next uh, thing, uh, let's talk about the 2021 Rural Child Hunger Summit. This is going to be on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, March 23rd through 24th. And as you can read from this, the goals of it are to highlight the disparities of uh, driving child hunger in rural communities and identifying some good uh, practices and policies that will help, imp uh, help existing nutrition assistance programs or reduce the incidence of rural child hunger and celebrate innovations that are community-based user service evidence. Uh, registration is open and there's no charge to attend this year's virtual rural child hunger summit. And just on a personal note, this is a really good program uh, that will help you with the kids because as you know, even though the pandemic is maybe coming to an end, let's hope, it's uh, important for us to uh, realize that people are economic status may not be recovering uh, as fast as we would like it, and that these programs can help in areas where there's a less resources available. So, um, you know, and libraries can play a role in this, and I hope you guys will check it out at least. Uh, anybody have anything to add to that? Okay, and moving on, uh, I hope you guys can check this out uh, sometime in the upcoming weeks uh, between this meeting and the next meeting. Uh, our S this is our Padlet. This is a screenshot of it right now. There's um, people are adding to this all the time. So there's a lot of good information. And I think, you know, if you can check it out once every other day or every day, and add whatever programming you may uh, have, uh, you know, or ideas you have. This is a good way to share it with everybody in the community. I, you know, I would would like to see a sh you know a show of hands if everybody knows about the Padlet. <laughs> if we're doing a good job of getting the message out there, if not, we'll redouble our efforts. You can also just speak. <laughs> uh, my job. Oh, cool. So at least the message is kind of getting out there. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I find this really a really good thing uh, uh, for you guys to uh, use, and it makes it easier for me to share information rather than sending a long email to everyone. This kind of cuts through it, and it's growing every day. It's a living, breathing uh, website. So are, you know, and anybody can add anything on to this. And if not, let me know. <laughs> and let's see what's our next thing. So you guys are kind of awesome on this. Okay, and these, these are some continuing education opportunities. Um, for creating, uh, we got some good ones for helping you guys with virtual story times. Uh, it's with the state library and it's in the, those links up there. And Web Junction is also getting some uh, services relating to children program, early literacy, summer reading. We got some great stuff and I hope you guys can take some, some time to check it all out. Uh, the 
the virtual story times thing is, as you know, we're probably still going to be doing virtual story times for a while and even forever. And getting better at it, this might help you speed up that process uh, by listening or taking some of these classes. And also, as you know, uh, kids are just getting back to school. And one of the things that you uh, might want to uh, help parents and families out with are those early literacy skills. And during the summer reading, I have a feeling that you're going to have a lot of participation this year in summer reading because everybody's been locked up and they're desperate for interaction with people. Okay, I'm going to stop this uh, sharing for a second. And I would like um, to give uh, Kim a moment or um, the talking books person, I'm sorry, <laughs> to talk to you guys about talking books right now or teaching books. I said talking, I always do that. And this is gonna be on the recording. That's okay, That's okay. thanks Chris. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and just, oh, you wanna let me share Yeah, my yeah, give me a moment. Uh, I got one, one second. Uh, one moment. I think Bruce, you're absolutely right. We're gonna take what we learned during this time about how to reach more people virtually and add that into our in-person time. So I'm excited to show you just a couple of new features for teaching books. Yeah. Okay, Bruce, one yeah. second. I got, I'm just about to make you, I had to find you. Okay. okay. And there you go. Okay, perfect. All right, let's grab the right screen here. And there we go. Well, thank you. So today, what I want to just showcase for you is a couple of things. So when you're in your libraries, you know that anyone coming to Book Connections, which is our is the Teaching Books Public Library face, anyone coming to Book Connections will see Welcome Nevada Resident. But what we really hope is that we make sure that we get everything set up for you so that your public library is showcased and welcomed here, so that you're patrons know that they're in the right place. They won't see any kind of pricing or anything like that. We wanna make sure also that you know that you can find resources for your CSLP list. So if I look up summer, I will see summer reading programs. I'll also see um, different re awards and distinctions, but let's go ahead and go into summer reading programs. Notice that you'll see, and we added both the 2021 and the 2020s, we heard out in the world that some people did not use their resources from 2020. And so they were going to go ahead and go with the 2020 programming. So you'll see Tales and Tales here for 2021 at the top. You can open up and then you will have, if I want early literacy, children's, young adults, I can open up that tab. And for those 186 books, you'll see 1800 resources. Right now they're sorted by number of resources. But again, this is a, po a possibility for you. If I want to share this list, I can share it in social media, I can share it out, I can create bookmarks so that my uh, patrons, if they come in, they can, these can be on a display. But again, they scan this or they go to this link and they will see all of the resources for this list. So it's a beautiful way to be able to get the word out. Again, if you're using these for your story times or you're using them for programming, you can scroll on down on the left hand side then and see which of these have story time activity kits and 18 of them will have a specific story time activity kit. So if I want um, Bear Came Along, for instance, I open that up and it will open for me down under book guides, activities and lessons. We'll have the story time kit. If you want to share this with patrons, you can use that sharing on social media to build excitement. And you can use this for, you know, if you can't, 
if people want access to something and they're not in the library itself. But here, a little maze and a little word search to go along with it already for you. And again, if I use the sharing tool on the right and I send that out, the pa your patron would just be able to open that right up. They wouldn't have to go into book connections. They wouldn't have to know anything at all about it. So using those sharing tools is key. And again, let's just go back to the homepage. You can search with the magnifier. You can even um, scroll down and then find summer reading listed on the right-hand side too. So another great way to get to those resources. Some new tools for you. I'll go in through summer reading though. Let, some new tools will be within, I was expecting it to come today. I'll open up children's this time. In between share and duplicate is going to be an embed tool and you'll be able to embed a list. So if you want to put that right on your library homepage and then your patrons will be able to go directly to the resources, you'll be able to do that too. They won't even have to know anything about book connections or teaching books. And so within a week, I would imagine in between share and duplicate on any list, you'll be able to have that embed code too. So if that will be helpful for you. But again, finding all of those great resources that go along in this one for the children's 364 books, over 3,000 resources. Again, I can share this entire list, or I can share if I were doing something with one and only Ivan, for example. I wanted to share all of the resources for one and only Ivan I share here. If I want to build some excitement about um, our author, Catherine Applegate, talking about why she wrote it. Here is her Meet the Author recording. I can share this page. I can have the shelf talker right on my shelves, or I can have a bookmark. And so if we scan this, then our readers will be able to hear the author speaking directly about the book. I want to make sure if there are any questions about the finding those re summer reading resources and some of the new sharing pieces to let us know. So again, I put in at the beginning, but I'll add it to the chat window again, the setup form, remembering to that any training or any conversations with us is all included in your license that was purchased for you by the state, by the state library. And so don't hesitate to reach out to us. Hey, we have a question. Uh, are we allowed to print the activity sheets? Yes access to every single thing on Book Connections is included in your license with, um, with the um, ability to, you have the rights to it. So again, too, if I wanted to search and I want complete, so which of these are complete readings? You have permission for the complete readings of all these titles. So I open up, I want my hat back. And we have a few excerpts and we have a complete video reading and then another complete reading here. So if you wanted to open up this using that sharing tool, you can give immediate access, but here um, down in here <laughs> is the somewhere for goodness sakes. Oh, he just reads it aloud and the text is here too. Where is that one? There we go, seven minute listen or the transcript, which is nice. Okay, but yes, permissions are granted with the resources with use our sharing tool though, because then they don't have to have access. They don't have to sign in. They go right to whatever you've given them rather than using the address at the top. Reader's theater is the same. So if you're looking for some reader's theater script ideas, and then we can open up that collection. And then any of these titles, these 426 titles, you have a reader's theater script ready to go. Not of the whole book, but of a section. Hi, Kim, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, I can. Sorry, with White Pine County um, Library. I was just wondering, I did um, for Nevada uh, Library Week, I did a post each week with one of the book readings. 
And when they opened them up, it said, welcome, Cal like California resident, or I don't even know if it was California, but is that because I'm not completely set up? It might be, and it might be depending on which one you use. So let me open up and go to the Nevada Reading Week list. So if I chose, um, let's say I, you chose one of these. And if I use my sharing tool, you shouldn't see that. So you're geolocated, but so is California because this whole state of California has a license as well. So if you use a sharing tool, they shouldn't welcome them as they should just get right to that resource. Okay. Okay. I had a couple people that are like, I thought it was spam because it said, welcome to California. I can't remember if it was California, but I, I was just wondering if there's something that I needed to do. Well, I, go ahead. Let's just connect after this and we can share screens together so I can see exactly what's happening. If that's okay with you, it will take us like 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be today, but let's connect soon so that I can okay. make sure that you have what you need. And then that, okay. yes, because you we want you all set up so that your patrons and then your statistics come through for you. If you're using, if you if they see Welcome Nevada Reader or not Welcome Nevada Resident, it's just going into this big pool. We want to make sure your statistics go to your library. Perfect. And how do you get the statistics? I guess is my next question. So once we're going to have this little conversation, <laughs> I'm going to put the setup tool in there, and we'll make sure that you or whoever you want to be your primary contact at your library, and then you would get monthly statistics. That'd be great, thank you. You're very welcome. Are there any other questions? There's always something new, so I appreciate being able to come and, you know, and sometimes it just takes a while to, she showed me three things, but what were they again? I know you have a lot on your plates. Pamela and, did have a question, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Um, Mayla Garcia from Washoe County Library. Can you um, just repeat really quickly the, the difference between sharing and duplicating the list? I was just looking at, on that on my other screen here and you said something about embedding. I'm sorry. So I, no, that's okay. I said a lot of things. So let's go ahead and <laughs> let's just choose any list. So let's use this Nevada Young Readers Award. It works for any list. So what is not here yet is going to be an embed tool and it's coming in the next I hope this week. And that would give you embed code that you could put on your library homepage if you wanted for people to be able to go right to those resources. The difference between sharing, if I share this list, I can send, I can put the URL in a newsletter. I can make bookmarks that have my, my patrons have access. I can create a little flyer for a display. I can pop something on a calendar item if I want to let people know, or I can send it in an email. I can put it out on social media. Any of these are fine. They're formatted, it's ready for you. So it's just sharing information about the resources that are here. If you duplicate the list, what you're doing is you're, because you wanna do something with it. Let's say that I wanna duplicate this list for myself and this is going to be um, Kim's copy. I'm just gonna keep track. So Kim's copy and I'm gonna use this um, enjoy resources for these amazing titles something that's going to show up when they open up the list and I'm going to save it. Now, I this is my own personal copy, not, um, not one that's obviously saved. I want to now um, edit it. So maybe I don't have all of these titles in my library. I want to take a few of them off or I wanna focus on certain ones. This is gonna be my own copy of this list. So I can adjust it, I can delete. So let's say I don't have um, neck and neck. And now I save it. And now I still, I wanna view this list. And now I see that I have seven titles rather than eight for this list and it's ready to go and notice that it's if I create something now, if I share it, it's going to be my copy with what I've saved. So it's my own. And I can even direct families, I can click to add a note here and I can say enjoy and whatever resource I want. 
and I save it and that would be included in my list. Got it. And I then leave, it will be, ex sorry. I leave book connections, I come back, you're gonna find it in your toggle when you're signed in under your reading lists. So your Nevada lists are here, but now any lists that you've created for yourself are under here. Perfect. You can share those with anyone that you'd like. So that embed tool is coming within the week with that code. But you can share them now in a, you know, any way that you want to. Thank you. Yeah. And and thanks for helping us find the problem with the reading weeklets. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, just to uh, let you know in the chat, Jess was wondering if you will provide the setup link. She's not sure that she received it. Yep. If you joined after I put it in the first time, you wouldn't see it. So yes, I'll pop that in there again. Are there any other questions? I know that you have many other things to talk about today, so I don't want to. And you know, any of these pieces, so under for professionals, if you want more information about using the book list and analysis collection, or you want more information about the section on homeschool support, just reach out. Training is provided at any time. Okay. Okay. You like your screen back? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kim. That was... <laughs> This is yeah. going to be a really good tool for you guys in summer reading, I think. Uh, do take a look over and see how you can make it work for you. I really like the aspect of the social media sharing because I know uh, most of you have Facebook. Uh, your libraries have Facebook and Twitter accounts, and this would be a great option to help promote your summer reading program materials. And big hand. <laughs> I'll stay just for a couple minutes in case, and then I'll let you all have, just in case something else comes up, but then I'll let you have back at it at your meeting. But thank you uh, for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. And uh, okay. Now we come to the fun part. This is sharing. Uh, this is sharing time. And I, I want to get a good idea of how you got guys' uh, summer reading program programming is going. Uh, are you getting ready? Are you... Do you have a strategy? Do you have a plan? Or are you just totally not ready yet? Which is okay because it's been a weird year. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing the screen and uh, we're going to talk. So you can unmute your micro microphones. And I guess we can start with uh, might not be Judy Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Um, it is Judy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going out there? Good. And thank you, Kim, so much if she's still here. I mean, she's just amazing. And every time she does a little presentation, I feel like I learned something new or I remember something that I was supposed to remember before. But anyways, um, yeah, and we use I use that resource a lot. In fact, we just did a link to a book for women's history I did with the author recording and why they wrote the book, because I, I just feel like that's so important to share with our patrons, you know, just that kind of that behind the scenes, you know, which you, you don't always know. So anyways, um, mm. anyways, for summer reading, we are um, very busy planning and um, basically um, we're going to be working with a lot of our community partners in Washoe County and um, we basically, the plan is we're going to be producing uh, about 2000, um, we're calling them activity packs and what it is, it's going to be a CSLP bag with, um, a book inside age appropriate, um, and activity, activity sheets that, um, are learning opportunities, family engagement, um, for each age, we're gonna have three different age groups for the bag, zero to five, six to 11, and 12 to 18. And then, um, let's see, Mayla's uh, um, here, so if I forget something, she can tell me. Um, and what else? We're going to have a craft inside the bag, and we're going to also have a virtual event that's paired with the craft so that they can do the craft um, with a staff person. And I think, I think that's everything, book, activity sheets. 
Oh, cool. We're in the process of ordering everything. So my head's kind of swimming around this morning <laughs> or spinning and swimming. Um, so it's kind of new for us. And 400 of those 2000s are reserved for um, community outreaches. Um, we'll be doing with um, PBS and the food bank at different locations, distributing those. I mean, the main, the main thing is to get kids to read over the summer. And we really want to get um, these activity books and um, everything out. We've never really done the, the take and makes before on the craft. So we're really excited about that. We've been inspired by other libraries, you know, through these chats that are doing the same thing. But if I forgot anything, Mela, if, you, if you're there, <laughs> she's been working on some of this with me. And today, actually, I'm submitting some of our orders. So um, I, I am here. Yes. Hi. Uh <laughs> We just had the question of how often we hand them out and we're just gonna hand them out at the very beginning um, of the program to the first, however many, how many did we decide on Judy? Uh, 16, um, it'll be 16 through 1600 throughout the branches. So each branch will you know, get a certain amount for all the ages. Um, but the thing that we wanna stress is that nobody's gonna be left behind because after the activity bags are gone or activity packs, um, everyone will still get a reading log and a, a book for their age. They're not gonna to get to actually pick the book, but um, you know that'll happen <laughs> once the pandemic's done. So um, it's just the best that we can do right now, but we're, we're really excited about it. Uh, in the chat, uh, Alicia asked if th that first says, this is awesome. Do they check out the book inside? Uh, the take and make a kit or do they get to keep it it's a prize book so they get to keep it oh wow yeah. and the other thing that's different is um we will encourage them to sign up with beanstack but you know in the past it was you know they would sign up and then they would get an email or an alert saying they they get a prize and they would come to the library that's not going to really work this time so we're going to hand the packs out um, encouraging them to sign up for being stacked, but they can also participate just with the reading log that's in there, um, just to make it easier. Um, you know, staff, we don't have time to add a, you know, grab and go type of service to actually, you know, have a laptop there and check them in and, you know, claim the prize and all that. So this is just going to be, they drive up or they walk in, they have three children, you know, oh, have you heard about our summer reading challenge this summer? No. And then, oh, here's, you know, one for each child. They walk out and then hopefully they're going to bring in their logs to claim their other prizes or they're going to participate with Beanstack. Awesome. And then um, this is Beate. Um, oh, hi. With, with Judy and <laughs> Mela. Um, thanks for all the questions in the chat. I've been, I've been trying to fire the answers in. Um, so they, they won't get to pick the book. Um, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be in age range, zero to three, three to five, probably six to eight, eight to 11, and then a teen age range. So that's that, of course, as public librarians is our biggest bummer is that the kids don't get to pick their books. Um, but, but we have a pretty good collection of prize books that we've purchased. Um, and, and we've infused them with more diverse titles that have just recently been published the past year. So we're working on that right now. But the other part I don't think Judy um, mentioned is that they get opportunities to continue to earn an additional two books throughout the summer. Did you say that, Judy? I did not. In fact, I know I, I said my head's spinning and it is. Me too. So on, <laughs> right? So on the, I mean, we, we are just formulating this as we go. So it's not... Um, <laughs> I mean, it's all written down. In fact, I was trying to pull up my frequently asked questions because a lot of the information's in there. But I didn't want to jump in over Beate, but now that she reminded me, on the reading log, um, on one side of the, um, it's eight and a half by 11, there's two sides. One side is the actual log to log minutes read. Um, and then on the other side, there's going to be an all ages bingo sheet and that's going to have activities that they can do. Some of them will um, be with our community partners, and then some of them will be, you know, learning our um, databases, and some of them will just be fun activities that they can do to stay engaged throughout the summer. Um, we're also doing a um, story stroll where we're going to um, ask for stories to be submitted, and those will be posted in various parks throughout our community. 
And so it's gonna be kind of a community wide event. We're trying to, um, you know, cause not everyone's a super reader. So the activity, um, the bingo games for those kids that maybe aren't gonna, you know, read and finish the 600 minutes they're you know but they can do the activities and still earn a book our main goal is getting books in the hands of all our littles out there that need them awesome and that's really super important to always get books for the little ones so that they can develop those executive function skills yes. <laughs> that we talk about all the time and especially given that uh most of these kids uh i've are growing up in the pandemic and their whole learning processes have been disrupted. So, you know, this is really good idea. I hope everybody can duplicate it. I've, but Washa always comes up with the greatest stuff sometimes, <laughs> you know, for summer reading. Um, and then someone what, asked how many um, activity sheets. Um, for the zero to five, they have the most. And right now I need to, pair, that's the one that I've been working on. I need to pare it down a little. I think I had 14 sheets because I mean the CSLP we're using everything from there also um, you know all of the resources that came with that and they have so many cute things this year it was really hard to decide so um, and then as the age progresses the packs are a little bit less like the teen ones I think have about six pages I'm not sure but um, you know everyone's going to get something so but yet yeah, the, the littles have more um, in terms of pages and really quick, um, I just want to give a shout out to Carson City because our Jen um, that works for Washo reached out to Carson City because mm -hmm. she had heard from our summer reading workshop training that we had back in January that Carson was um, in the process of creating um, activity kits. So they took time with Jen and, and went over their process and what they were doing. So mm -hmm. um, thank you, Carson, <laughs> for sharing yes. your idea. See, that's a part of the library community that we're trying to develop. So everybody mm -hmm. can help everybody. If you have a great idea, you can share it. Uh, and I hope this these meetings help with that. Uh, Linda, do you have anything to add about your preparations for summer reading yet? Okay, you can put it in the chat if uh, your microphone's not working or you're not sure, it's okay. If you haven't started, it's all right. You know, we still got a little bit of time. This is to give you ideas and everything like that. Uh, Kira Frederick, uh, what, do you, what is your library doing as of yet? Okay, you can put it in the chat if you'd like. Ah, there it is. Her mic isn't working, but she's happy to share that we are also making activity packs. Activity packs are really good. Thank you, Kira. Uh, Robin, do you have anything to add about your summer reading program preparations? Okay, uh, you can also add that into the chat. Uh, Samantha Brown, is there anything you got going for your summer reading program? Um, I'm with the Washoe County Library, so we're doing the activity packs. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Samantha. <laughs> That's My okay. bad. Uh, and we did hear from Robin. Uh, she says, nothing from me that hasn't been covered by our amazing ah, Washoe County Library System. Uh, Bruce, when, yes, Bruce, ma'am. I, I need to apologize. I, I see a lot of our Washoe people on here. And okay. it's because we're still at the planning stage <laughs> of, of these okay. things. Not all of our staff know all the details. So um, okay. Washoe people, I'm sorry if you're just learning about some of these things firsthand. And I really appreciate you guys attending this. Well, that's <laughs> so, a, that. Sorry. That, that's what these meetings are for. So you can find out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's but going you on. You should find out from a state meeting what's going on in your own organization. So. And I'm sorry <laughs> if I put you on the spot. I'm sorry, Beth. <laughs> no, no, not your fault. That's on us. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Alicia, do you have anything to add? 
It's more exciting this way, Robin. Yes. <laughs> Alicia. And let's see, you can put it in the chat if your mic's not working. Uh, ah, not sure your mic is working, so she's going to type it. Uh, uh, the amazing Mandy Springer. <laughs> I know your mic isn't working as well. Is, can you uh, add into the chat? Uh, what's your, going on in your neck of the woods? Okay. Uh, Je oh, there it is. She's contacted Indel to get native flowering seeds. Oh, to have bugs. Oh, nice. Very good. I like that. And um, let's see. Uh, that is so awesome. I really like that. Uh, I hope um, if you could, if you could, on the Padlet, share share your guys' takeaway kits and also. Any uh, contacts like where you got the seeds and your ideas so that everybody can uh, take a look at it. It would be great. Ed, that would be a great thing, I think, for us to do is just keep sharing our ideas. Jess, you always have great ideas. What do you got going on in your neck of the woods? Hold on a sec while I figure out, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That Where all the buttons are. Um, yeah. So the girls, uh, and they're both on here, Jamie and Jasmine, um, they're, they're the ones leading this. I'm just kind of leaning in the ear in um, to hear everyone else's ideas. So um, I'll let them take it from here. No problem. <laughs> uh, and Jess McDiamond, Dermot's mic isn't working. Okay, hey, Jasmine. Hi. Um, so we're just kind of throwing around the idea that we could potentially be doing stuff outdoors in person with masks. So we have a lot of partnerships that we are wanting to do, um, like get with the police canine unit, mm. Zumba and yoga stuff. I don't know how that's going to work with masks, but our idea is shake your tail feather. <laughs> um, and then we definitely want to dissect the owl pellets with a maybe a park ranger or something like that. So those are like programming ideas that we have. And then like our regular crafts and adult crafts, team crafts that we right. would normally do. Mm -hmm. We're also partnering with Nevada Outdoor School. Hopefully we're um, we have a meeting we're gonna have with them. Um, we wanna do some like tails and trails hiking up into our different canyons it's something they've already started doing programming um so we're hoping we can kind of jump on that since their whole scope is talking about animals all summer long they um they do a lot of educational hikes so we kind of want to partner with them so really trying to lean into the outdoor partnerships this year 4-h all that and I think that's a good idea since everybody's been kind of stuck in their homes and getting outside is, you know, getting back outside will probably be a good cathartic release from all the tension that's happened over this year. Do you all realize that we've been indoors for a year now, <laughs> you know, and that's that's why this the nature part of this if you have if you have the ability to do that i really look into it if you guys have come across any cool links to share please put it on the padlet or share it in the chat here uh that would be super awesome but great ideas love them you know you guys always come up with good stuff i just had just uh just uh put into chat and so did alicia so I'm going to uh, go with Alicia's first. Uh, she's going. They're going to be doing take-home packets, and they're also going to have K9. Uh, oh yeah, this is the stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Home Depot fire truck coming out outside workshops. Uh, we are going to do virtual stream challenge too. That's interesting. I would be really curious to hear about that uh, because that's gonna. That sounds very interesting. 
and they have their schedules planned and they're ready uh, and in the middle of ordering supplies. Uh, Mandy, uh, is, uh, Bethany Trimble is the native seed expert at Indow, and her email is btrimble at indow.org. Uh, Jess McDarmid, or Darmid, excuse me, uh, have a list, they have a list of passive programs for when they come into the library by appointment, if that's still in effect, and also going to be providing activity packets and books. And uh, Ms. Garcia said, shake your tail feather is so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't disagree with that. Uh, Lori, do you have anything to add? Oh, we have a quick question. Are you going to limit the number of students who will see the K-9 in trucks? Okay, go ahead, Lori, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, Lori, if you'd like, uh, just add it into the chat or, oh, there you are. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. <laughs> All right, there's too many mute. Um, True. <laughs> we just hired a new uh, children's librarian, so we will start planning here next week when she starts. At this point, we're planning on doing in-house um, story hours with stipulations, of course. Um, but that's where we're at. Oh, OK. Well, congratulations on the new hire. Oh, that, that's going to be awesome. Uh, and I hope hope to see her at the next meeting, or he at the next meeting. Let's, okay, um, Dakota York, do you, do you have anything to add? So I'm part of the little system with Jasmine and Jamie. So our programming mm. is along the same lines where we will do take and make crafts and try to encourage people to get outside by doing things like scavenger hunts and hikes and just zoom activities where we're gonna do the shake your tail feather as well and animal yoga and hmm. activities that's about all that's awesome and the, uh if you got any good uh links to everybody please put them on the padlet uh explaining how you're putting your packs together and maybe even a link to animal yoga which is kind of fascinating to me and how that's going to be done. Um, you know, and also, you know, let us know when these things are going to be done so people can check them out. Uh, Elizabeth Lucchese, Chasey, excuse me, do you have uh, any summer reading program planning plans already in the works? And you can put them in chat if your mic is not working. Okay. Uh, thank you all for uh, contributing to this. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, as soon as I find my hunting, hunting, hunting. One moment, please. Ah. Okay. And okay. And we got some future discussion ideas uh, that you guys, uh, when I went over the uh, summer reading program workshop uh, suggestion list, um, one of the ideas, and I think we should discuss this in the next one is how to promote your library uh, for the uh, summer reading program. And uh, I think that would be a good idea. So if you have some promotion ideas or you're searching for some promotion ideas, we can definitely uh, uh, check those out uh, for you. And we can share that in the next meeting. Uh, this is our first meeting. So there's always stuff that's going on that we don't expect, <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to the next uh, future discussions. And uh, you can contact me at uh, 
my email address here, uh, bdouglas at admin.nv.gov. And there's a little dash between the B and the Douglas. And you can also uh, contact me on my um, work telephone, which is area code 775-684-3373. And I am going to put in the chat my uh, cell phone number. Uh, and uh, so that you guys can contact me that way if you don't get my emails. So, uh, which is probably a better way because most of the time I am working uh, from home. Our next meeting is going to be Monday, April 19th, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. And, oops, one more. And... And till then, uh, thank you all. And before you go, stop screen, stop sharing. Yeah, I'm still little thumbs when it comes to these things. Uh, my, uh, I'm putting my number in the chat just because I do know that this is going on to YouTube and I don't wanna be spammed or have my numbers stolen. Uh, if there's any, uh, it's 10.51 right now. Um, I, If you guys want to hang out until 11, you're welcome to. Or if you need to get uh, to the desk so that your coworkers don't glare at you, please do. <laughs> Although your coworkers are all probably saints and very nice people. So I am now stopping the recording so that you can just uh, discuss 